Welcome everyone, welcome to Team Fortress TV for another uh, Premiership game. Uh, I'm Ombrak, I'm with Kermit tonight. Hello Kermit, how are you doing? I'm not bad, not bad, how are you? I'm okay, and uh, we have Peter as well on camera doing all the production work for you guys so you can see everything that's happening on the server. And on the server we'll have seven against... Uh, I'll say with a lovely French accent because this is a French team, The Crevé, which pro basically means I want to die, if you're not familiar with the, my language. Uh, this is week four of uh, ETF 12 season 32 uh, premiership, we've said that already. And uh, yeah, we have uh, probably uh, the most uh, uneven game of the season, Kermit, between uh, the first seed and probably what is the eighth bit of the of prem this season well i guess technically they're now seventh still last place but uh, as far as i'm aware yak's team dropped out so you know they can't be eighth in prem now still oh, be true. last but not eighth so at least that's something i think yeah. we had a poll in the chat earlier as well uh with you know who thinks who's gonna win i think it was uh, around 83 percent of chat were favoring seven i think i'll have to say i agree Oh, the poll has changed now. It says uh, fifty-six percent for seven. Wow, that's uh, it's been a pretty big swing. Yeah, I can't say I'm, I'm agreeing with that poll though, Kermit. I think. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll see how it's gonna unravel. But I'm pretty sure seven is the big favorite on this uh, this fixture. Um, when you just take a look at the both team previous results this season, uh, this is a uh, saying a lot of things. Vercrave hasn't won a single point this season um arguably playing some of the weaker team like two of the weaker team in the in prem whereas seven uh doesn't have the perfect run quite yet they tied against uh, i think it was a cent but yeah if you just look at the sheer numbers uh, it looks pretty tough for a uh, ref team yeah it does and i think sel merkin i'm assuming he's going to play scout instead of tiger tonight um I don't know if they'd want to switch Stark on to Scout, maybe, but if Sel pulls out another Scout performance like he did against Seven the other week, um, I think Seven shouldn't have too hard a time this week. Yeah, Sel uh, was absolutely exactly. nothing. Yeah, yeah, and Sel is uh, indeed playing against Thagger on what I'm assuming is going to be a roaming Scout. Uh, um, I, I don't think Stark is going to play Scout on that. You usually don't swap your lineup around just for a single Merc, so I'm expecting Silences to play Scout. And he's a really able Scout. We've seen him playing Scout when uh, Credu is playing Sniper on Product for a cent. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, he's, shown, he's proven himself already quite a, a few times. Uh, but before we go any further, I say we go through the rosters. So uh, I'll let you pick one, uh, Kermit, and I'll do the other. Okay. I'll, do want, I'll run down seven. Is this, is this? I'm not sure what's going on here. If that's actually Mula just uh, aliasing as seven, or if that's uh, actually someone from seven that I don't have on my friends list. But uh, so tonight we'll have. Uh, it's Mula. Yeah, we're going to have Cell stepping in for Tiger on Scout, along with the Lash. We'll have Starkey on Romer. I'm assuming he'll be joining soon. Captain on Pocket. Raymond on Medic and Cadis as the demo man or seven. And on the other side of the field, we have uh, you mentioned Mula is going to play Medic. It's his first season in Prem. Um, Raf is playing demo man, who we we're more accustomed to seeing playing soldier, but he's playing demo man this season for his team. Uh, the two soldiers are Duo and uh, Olga, who is infamous for his off class, uh, notably Paro and Heavy. And the two scouts are Karnax and Alien Smiley. Uh, I don't really remember who's playing. I think Alien is playing Pocket Scout and, and Karnax is playing the Roaming Scout. But yeah, like just again, this is pretty much all all we we're gonna talk about tonight. But this looks like a, again a pretty uneven fight, and like, we've seen the numbers how they favor Seven, and even the 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 names uh, all across the the server don't really. Uh, Gives me more faith for the Crave. But one thing uh, could upset this whole situation, Kermit, and it is the map pool tonight because Gully is. Uh, we've seen that forever, and it's probably one of seven best maps. But the second map will be a Logjam, and uh, I'm not quite sure what we can expect on that map. 
Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, like Ascent just running Credo Perma Sniper, and a lot of teams seem to like doing that, but I have not seen a single map of uh, Seven or Vukovion uh, Logjam yet. Sniper to mid is at least a very good strat, but it works kind of outside of mid as well. Like second, you can snipe on like attack and defense like really easily. Last is like the only place where sniping is like a little bit weaker. I've also I'd like to see someone like uh, well Olga basically I'd like to see if he runs pyro at all on logjam. It is a pretty open map, but like the flanks are really small. So if you catch someone in uh, log room or cave as pyro, like they're pretty much dead. So that that could be interesting. I realise though that Olga's kind of nerfed now that his uh, scorch shot and detonator are gone. Could still yeah. be pretty interesting in Old Jam though. I've been told that uh, the update, the, the the nerfs happened just to deny him playing Pyro because people didn't want to see him play Pyro. I don't know if it's actually true, but this is what I heard. And I've uh, heard that as well. <laughs> but yeah, Old Jam, you mentioned how the, the the map works with the one really wide. Uh, choke point and then the two flank are quite uh, quite tight the log room and the cave and uh, there's a lot of uh, also hidden sp spots where you can hide and try to surprise the enemy and I don't know if uh, both these teams are quite um, well aware of all these spots uh, I think it's pretty no I'm not gonna say easy but probably more manageable to play on this map to play for the back cap or to flank plays as well so it's gonna be interesting to see why it happens because uh, the uh, unknown factor on this map, the fact that maybe both these teams don't really know how to play it yet, might as well be the saving grace for uh, for the French team because uh, on an even ground they probably stood stand no chance. But you never know what can happen when uh, E7 is not really ready to um, to take what uh, what well, Olga maybe is going to throw at them. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I'm th trying to think as well, like. I'm pretty sure most of the Frenchies here like have been around around at least as long as I have so like I, I think they must have had previous experience back in I think it was season 19 maybe 20 on playing log jam back then and it is like a pretty different map but maybe like they're at least not completely new to the map like some people might be yeah true but y you mentioned how um they couldn't run sniper, and the thing with seven is they don't really like to play with the uh, north class that much. Um, like on the Mon product, for example, a map which is really renowned for uh, allowing the perma sniper, like Credit does for a cent. Um, seven doesn't really do that, so I don't know if they will be willing to do that as well on uh, on log jam, or if they are uh, want to adapt their playstyle. So I guess all we can do is wait and see what happens on the. But log jam is only going to be the second map, so. Uh, Let's take things back to Gully, who is going to be the th first thing we're going to see tonight. Um, I'm kind of, kind of think I know what you're going to say, but what what is your prediction for that first match, Kermit? Well, I think seven will win, but I'm, I think I could maybe see like a stupid round or two, maybe them throwing away a round or two just to like you know a back cap or something. I'd say it could it could even go maybe like a five two or something. I think Seven did just beat um, the Theorist Seven Two on this map on Gully here, so it, maybe you know they they did throw a couple stupid rounds to them. They might do the same again here in the official. I think Seven will win, but I'm going to say it's going to be five two, and it'll go the full thirty minutes. So not even a run difference. Ooh, I nope. like that. You're taking that risk. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I wish I could be as confident as you are. But I think it's going to be a straight five over seven. Uh, Maybe not 10 minutes, like you can expect when the game looks really uh, uneven, but yeah, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue for 7. And uh, we'll see. We, we haven't talked that much about Silent Testing Scalp. Maybe this is actually going to hurt them because the. I mean, he's not a scalp main, even though he's really good at it. But can he adapt to the way they'll play? You mentioned um, the Theorist game for 7. Uh, can he replicate what Tiger does on on that map? I don't know. Uh, on the they had a warm up game and uh, on Logjam it was actually extremely close for seven. They won against the Thurbit, but it was only a two one thing. So maybe uh, they're not feeling as confident as they could be going into that game. And uh, the the other thing that can actually be uh, good for uh, the French team is that they pretty much have nothing to lose anymore on that for that season. They have zero points. They can't reach playoffs. Uh, so, I mean, why not try everything and just to pitch random shit and maybe it's going to happen, maybe it's going to work for them. So, I don't know, maybe there's going to be that X factor, the 
I don't know if they if they can make seven tilts, but they can uh, probably surprise them a bit. Uh, I saw Olga in chat saying uh, asking seven if they're ready for the full time heavy. So maybe we are actually going to see a, a heavy. It's going to be a. I think there's some surprises in the game that awaits us, and uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some off classes, and as we say, we are going live on Gullywash. And uh, so again, week four of uh, season 32 of Premiership. This is seven against a uh, French team called Le Crevet, and uh, we're going to see what's happening on that first middle. Uh, if the French is have anything up their sleeve, they don't. It's a cookie cutter lineup for both teams. Uh, Kate is already on the high ground trying to uh, do some damage to the flank. The high bomb is coming from Duo, but can't really reach anything. Uh, and he's getting picked by Celentes, claiming the first frag. This is how you get carried by your Merc, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Vukrave already falling back to choke. They, they lost three players now. They have no demo, no pocket. This is looking really bad for them already. And they are wisely falling back to their last. But look at that captain and both of his guys are chasing. They're trying to get for the medic. Captain with a deep bomb. He can't really quite get the frag. He's getting cleaned up by Karnax. And uh, Probably the best thing you could have attempted here, and uh, this is going to be the first last hold probably for uh, the French team, unless unless they want to try something maybe a bit risky, going through the riverside, but Olga dies straight away, and this is probably now a good time for them to sit back on last hold and wait for seven to come at them. That was uh, so much aggression. Oh, we've alien out on pyro here, and seven look like they might. I feel they should suicide someone in, but they might just. Try and push there. They're looking as if Captain wants to try and push through a shutter door here with the Uber. Oh no, Stark's in water now. And no one's. Those taking a buff, he might try and fight him here. Don't know if they're going to want the sack for an off class. And Stark goes down. This could take a while because we know all seven uh, is can be extremely patient, and uh, the French team. I don't re I don't think they're going to try their luck yet. It's still too early in that game to try crazy crazy plays so they're just gonna peek here and there try to see if they can do anything uh, Starkey dies so maybe we'll come up come back Sniper? as an class but no he's still on Roamer and uh, uh, yeah we can see how they want to break that hole usually what they do is uh, they try to apply a lot of pressure on Riverside and uh, while Cadius looks at uh, the shutter door so maybe this is what they have in store for uh, for the French team uh, but the pyro there it's gonna be quite a a pain to deal with, and I'm surprised not to see a sentry gun coming for uh, the French team. It looks like they don't want to set up the, the extremely heavy holds. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't have at least like a sentry or a... Oh, Cell getting a pick underneath onto Duo under the point. He's going to try and run out, but he, there are stickies here. Start going in for the sack, but Pyroblast exists. Cell is still under though. He's been arrowed by Raymond. He's going on the point. Oh, he's trying to go for it. The Uber has been used by Mula trying to go for that pawn. Karnax was extremely weak, so the Uber had to be used, otherwise, uh, Silentis would have won that fight. He's getting cleaned up in the end. But now Seven is just busting through the shutter dog. They're all the space in the world. Raymond uses his own Uber, and now it should be an easy fight for Seven if they can clean up the frags, but they don't quite manage to do that. But they don't need the frags, they just all sit on the cap, and Cadence claims the first round. And uh, that play from Silentis, with the help of, the, of his teammates, was. Uh, Exactly what Seven needed to break that hold. Karnak's kit got the 1v1 against Cell and just started taunting on the point in about 30 HP. He was just completely useless for half of the last hold. That was a really nice push from Seven though. Get really coordinated, no really uh, any room for mistake here, and this is the second man I was gonna see what's happening. The bomb from Captain going extremely deep is getting assisted by Starkey. And they're probably gonna set up a sync play, but Stark is getting cleaned up by Karax and Olga onto that elbow. And now Kedis is alone over the point. He's getting pushed, he's getting cleaned up by Alien. This fight could go in the French way now because the ball, the flank from Duo, he went drop down. He claimed two frags with the help of Olga. I know it's only Falash against four players for the French team, and that was an extremely nice reaction here. Uh, kind of a miscommunication here on the side of Seven, and uh, both. Uh, Starkey and Kate uh, died a bit overextended. Oh, I suppose and, uh, there's only a demo and medic here. He might no. He oh, had no. the chance there where it was only the demo medic through. He actually could have maybe tried to go for an aggressive play, like he's doing now. He gets wrapped low, but not low enough. Got a lot of damage here. He captures his end. Gets Can he get the good. force? It was close enough. The Mula managed to escape uh, a lot of aggression here for the French. They tried to take the space that was given to them, but a nice reaction as well on the side of Seven. And this is going to be a super big ad for uh, Mula and the rest of his team. And uh, maybe they want to try to push out Silentis. He's already having a gun on last. And the Uber is being seven used will on just give this point up. 
Oh, Some will just give this up and they can hold last with the level 3 that Sil's already built. They don't have to hold last, Kermit, because the Uber has been used kind of poorly by the French team. And now maybe the contest is going to come from 7. They try to go in, but Captain is taking a lot of damage. He has to go yeah, back, back, otherwise he's going to die. And uh, uh, Kedus was also extremely clubby. And now the Uber Ari is in the hands of Raymond. And Sil has switched off now. He does. He's back on scout. Maybe a push out for 7 now, they have the uber while Mula is building his own, he has 50% charge, so will that be enough to deny the push from 7? Uh, I'm not really sure what's happening, the push from lower lobby, they claim a frag onto Dwood, avoiding the stickies onto the lobby door, and now the French have to go back because they don't have the uber, they don't want to get crushed by uh, the invulner invulnerability from uh, 7, and they go back to mid, they reset now, and this is probably the best they could have. Uh, got from that with the Uber D sets, and now they're gonna sit on choke trying to see if Seven wanna risk anything. Cadus once more going extremely low. He gets cleaned up by Cadus, uh, by Olga, I mean, and uh, Uber is still not being used by Raymond, who just jukes Olga really well. And now the Frenchies, they're gonna have to fall back because it looks really dire for them. Dwarf trying to make a play behind, but Flash is just gonna ch take him off and chase him down. I think that was really nice by Seven. Like they, they knew that they would probably like Uber as soon as Cadus died, hoping that Raymond would. Oh, but so in from drop down onto Raymond. The wall cleaned up. Must have been all the behind. Whoops. He barely touched Raymond on the. Uh, Cadus is back up and the Uber's still not been used. Right from Seven and the Frenchies are two down. And that was really well played by Seven, knowing they could sacrifice Cadus and just keep the Uber. What's a demo in the grand scheme of things when you can just not use your Olga own Olga going in for the force, he gets... <gasps> he gets the sink! Really Raymond well played drops here. Olga. Really well played. I think that's the other way around, Kevin. I think it's Olga who dropped Raymond, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all in all, that was a really nice play. But now it's only Raph and Mula, so even though they have got the drop, this is going to be really bad for them. They're a number of disadvantage. Mula has to use his Uber. Everybody's weak onto 7. But all in all, ultimately, this is... A Decent situation for Seven because they are resetting the situation after that drop from Raymond to Olga, and uh, this is again a perfect play here for Seven. They just uh, threw a lot of bodies at uh, Mula trying to force him, and it actually worked out pretty well for them. And now it's going to be another uh, equal Uber situation on Nas. We've seen them the first time they used Mula, uh, they forced Mula without really uh, breaking a sweat. So uh, I'm surprised to see Kedus just walking. Going Kedus already. is raining stickies. He kills Raph on the point, he kills there with Cadus and stick this off and win. What? Yeah. How? That happened. Um, How? Cadus just pressed W just from Raph's side. He just put a, a few stickies top right and then just went straight to the point and killed Raph. I have no idea how that happened. That was... Or how that was allowed to happen, that was insane. A touch is respect here from Cadus towards the French team. He just pressed W, you didn't even try to jump in or do fancy things. He just went in and it worked. The aggression coming onto Raph in that third mid. Captain claiming two frags already. This is looking really good for Seven. He's still on drop down. Captain doing a lot of damage onto Mula and now it's gonna be really hard for them because the French are uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place. And the hard place is called Captain and he's claiming a fourth frag here. And uh, it's finally getting cleaned up, but the damage is done. And this is not really bizarre for, for Vukrever. They, they were just stuck here doing nothing but getting spammed by Captain. Captain bombed in first and just got like, like a few hundred damage over. I think Ra he got wrapped down to 20 HP instantly. Stark followed up with more damage. Stark died, but then Captain just got a 4k on mid. Just the, the soldier aggression, it was just timed perfectly. So that there was nothing that could be done, basically. And we do have a huge team, Uber ad for 7. They're just not punishing the, the solo plays from the 7 players. This is quite uh, sad to see that one of 7 players wants to do something he can do without without being contested. Now the Uber is being used by 7 onto the shoulder top. But Silentis dies in the back line from a flank there from Duo. And now this is actually quite even situation. Starkey dies as well. So it's a 5 4 v 4 now. The numbers are in favor of Drug um, Prove, maybe because of the spawn times. But Captain, once more, he doesn't care. He just Goes forward, claims another frag onto Alien, and uh, this, it looks so easy for Seven right now. Yeah, it, was all, it could have been really big after getting that pick on Sil, but the Uber was just kind of wasted top right. It, it was actually looking pretty good there. I think Seven just, I think Cadus just came in and just was raining down damage again, and just kind of won the round. It looks like the, the road EM from Seven is 
more than enough to uh, to break the hold from uh, the Creve, who's trying to do Kedis something different here. Yeah, Karnax and Rav uh, teaming up to get the frag onto Kadus. This is probably a good start here, but the bomb from Starkey is going in unannounced. He's doing a lot of damage again. Mula was isolated on the top right, and uh, once more, this is a, a wipe on two mid from seven. It, it looked good for uh, the Creve at the start, but uh, the quick response and uh, adapt play from Starkey uh, won, won them the round, the mid. No, maybe not the round yet, but we'll see. It was looking good with, uh, I think it was Captain and Kadis going down early, but everyone just got stuck in that elbow. And yet, like, if you want to go up to the enemy's choke, you need to be fast. You need to get out of there instantly or you're just going to get spammed down, which is what I'm pretty sure just happened. Again, Kadis got damaged and I think Talash got a couple people. Sil got someone. The scout's cleaning up on the damage. And again, here's a huge ad for 7 coming in. It's once more used through the shutter door. The sentry gun is going to be taken down right now and now this is probably going to be a point play. They're trying to hold everyone onto the lobby. The spawn from Valkyrie 7, they're just trying to assert their position with a lot of spam from Captain. Vukrov is just hiding in spawn while Raph is on the point trying to waste as much time as he can but if all of his team is dying on the rest of the map there's no point of him, he's not doing anything and the poor miscommunication yeah, it was again it looks really easy for 7 because um, it's as if, I don't know if you agree with that but it's as if the French are extremely respectful from 7 and don't really want to bother them playing the game you know yeah, it's like just like the exactly what server want to do in like every last push. They just get everyone in on top right into spawn and just make sure they can't come out left and just win. So the only demo lives. We do have a bit of lag here. I think that that might be the seven win. Stark does go down on top right though. Mula is like 19 HP. He's dead as well. As soon as Mula entered the middle fight, it was 14 HP. So uh... yeah. That's a uh, pretty hard way to win the middle, and now the, the French are trying to go back in, trying to see if they can claim a frag onto Raymond, but look at him, he's just being escorted uh, <laughs> to choke by both of his guys and killers. Do you have a soldier behind? Uh, no, All I think they just HP. played it. All gun 12 HP, no. Played All it trying to hide the And uh, yeah, again, well, it's so clean from 7, they, they got the frag onto the medic and then they played around their own medic so he wouldn't die from the... A uh, counter sack and Kados with the frag on to wrap that could be uh, the nail in the coffin here because with no demo to hold your last property, this is going to be extremely tough for the French team. It looks like you may have been right with your 5 0 prediction. This looks like it's going to be another round for 7 any second, especially with Alien still dead, Raft just spawning, everyone's stuck in spawn. Gonna try and come out top right, Kados is already there. <laughs> Mula it's down, Karnak down. Games. And this could be wrong, Olga uh, is. Uh, Dead. It's now Elgin playing Paro, but what can he do? It's only now once more only Raf. He gets one frag onto Silentes, but that's just not enough. And this is uh, probably the quickest 5-0 of the season so far. Uh, 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes, and uh, I mean, there's no argument to be made here. Uh, Seven was just a better team. Yeah. Oh God, I've just actually looked at the scoreboard for the first time. Raf was on seven points by the end of that game. I think one of those seven points was the frag he got on Sill in the last few seconds. Over the first 12 minutes, basically, it was a point every two minutes. That was not too hot. You know, I, ha you know, I just said at the start, you know, I, I kind of hoped it'd be 5 2, just so we'd have, you know, more of a game than just a quick 5 0 roll. But, um, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> and uh, I haven't uh, looked at the logs yet, Kermit, but. Bringing them up myself. I, I'm guessing that it's going to be pretty, pretty good for seven, ex especially the scouts. When usually when you the roll, lash. the scouts have extremely nice numbers, and uh, I can see the lash going for one, one. The left one death, death on the thing. server. It's pretty good. Okay, this with a cheeky 400 DPM as well. It definitely showed in that game. He was just walking all over the Frenchies. Are they just all the space in the world? Especially that one push where he literally just walked in from River on the low ground and just firing stickies and just won the round himself. And we can see Raf, like Raf, Karnax, and Alien all under 200 DPM not having the best games there. But when you're losing 5 0 and like that, there's not much you can do. And uh, what's pretty pretty rough as well is the number of deaths from Olga and Duo, uh, the both soldiers from the French team with their 12 and 13 deaths. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty tough to p apply pressure when you're dead. And uh, 
I don't know these locks. They, they're rough, and maybe we're a bit rough on, on them as well. But this is probably what happens when the best teams, best team in the in the in Europe plays against the uh, up and coming play, up frame. and coming players because uh, all like most, not all of them, but most of these players have never played Prem before. Uh, I think only Olga and Raf have played Prem, so uh, it's it's a tough introduction uh, this season for them. Yeah, and then also, funnily enough, though, when you look at the um, like medic stats, the only drop was actually Raymond when Olga uh, synced two rockets on him in second and dropped. And he dropped. Uh, Mula didn't actually drop at all, but... It's fine. It means they have one thing going for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they came out on top on at least one stat of the who got most drops. And now, this is the second map, Kermi. We, we've talked about Logjam, how it could be an element of surprise, but now that we've seen what happened on the first map, do you still believe that there is room for a mistake for Seven, or this is going to be another stroll in the park for them? It kind of the, like, I think you said that it was, they had a, Seven had a close game in the warm-up. Yeah. They, again, it, I'm going to say it could be the same as what I thought for last round. Either it, will, it could be like a relatively you know, close-ish game, like it won't go to the full thirty. It will go the full thirty minutes. It could be like you know, no win difference, or it will be another five zero. Either be very close or not close at all. With Arsena, Carnax and Heavy. Oh, I thought I was hoping that he'd <laughs> run heavy to me. I yeah. mean, at this point, what they have nothing to lose. We've mentioned that uh, they've lost all the games so far. Um, what could hurt them more at this point? Nothing, not much, I believe. And uh, what's the harm in trying new things to see? Maybe something's gonna bother Seven because um, th you've mentioned how this map is extremely wide, especially the middle. Like, look at this. It's yeah, just, it's just huge. It's, it's like Madison Square Garden. Like, it's yeah. ex insanely huge. And uh, what scares me a bit for the French team is that um, this, like this, if you have good soldiers who who know how to jump well, this can get extremely tough because the high box, the high box is probably the the biggest skybox I've ever seen. And uh, we all know how Starkey and Captain are proficient at jumping. And uh, if they manage to find uh, nice angles to bomb onto the combo, um, this is going to be extremely tough for uh, Karnax and Alien to deny them. So uh, there are two ways for uh, the French team in my eyes to counter that. And you let me know which one you prefer. But either they just sat extremely back and wait for Captain and Starkey, uh, which probably means giving up the mid, or they just don't care about that and they just try to go as deep as they can themselves and see who is going to do that best. What, what do you think is the best approach here for the French team? I'd say maybe the sitting back and just wait for Stark and Captain but also with a sniper to mid because when someone does like a, a big high bomb like Captain and Stark might do it's so so easy for a sniper to just pick them out this guy with a body shot and just completely shut down at least half of the aggression for Seven. And Alien Smiley is on Sniper now. Hopefully that's not just for pregame. Hopefully we can see some Sniper to mid. Because I was surprised to not see, you know, like Olga just go pyro last map just to see if that would, you know, change anything at all. So hopefully they'll maybe try, like, some other strats on this map. Hopefully they've got something cooked up. I hope so. I hope they have... Um... Uh, uh, on on Gully, we we've seen Talash in the, on the rollout playing spy and just checking for classes. So maybe they are expecting something like that as well, or where he does think, that every time anyway. But yeah, Talash just will do that every single time he spawns. I think. But you just can't in check. Case. You can't check five off classes, can you? So yeah, true. <laughs> maybe it's uh, you start on NG then switch heavy. You, people won't see that coming. I don't know. Yeah, it could just you know delay it out. You'll be a little late in your rollout, but they won't know for sure that you're on a an off class. I mean, if you decide to sit back, uh, being late by one or two seconds doesn't isn't really the end of the world. So maybe this is actually a, a something that could happen. Well, again, this is all assumptions and, and guessworks. We don't really know what the French have up their sleeves, but uh, for the sake of uh, surprise and having a good game, I hope they try something different. Because if they, I'm pretty sure if they go cookie cutter, they they won't really stand a chance for that long. But both teams are ready. We, we're going on to that second map uh, between uh, uh, Vukovic and uh, Seven. And uh, 
he's anything happening yet on these four. Huge no. brain from Karnax. He went sniper just during the like freeze time there, knowing Thalash would check it. Then he just switched back off onto scout. Uh, we'll see for that. Mid, uh, so they might expect the sniper now. Look at this position from Kedus. While Raph is sitting really weak into each other, Kedus was already sitting on the shed. The bomb is coming, all the Frenchies are pushing from the left side, but the bomb is coming from Starkey and he got the frag extremely easily onto Duo and a lot of them uh, on the rest of the combo and it looks like the French, they, they try to go for that re mid where you sit really deep, uh, really back, I mean, it didn't really work out and the bomb from Captain gets one rocket onto Mula, can he get more or is he gonna get helped uh, by Alien and uh, Mula manages to escape but yeah, it looks like the Frenchies have chosen their way, they're gonna sit back and wait for 7 I thought Alien was about to get caught in lobby there. The yeah, like, I think as soon as Seven think there's going to be a sniper to mid, they're going to go right side so they can get to choke faster and get on the sniper faster. They're going to have a fight in lobby as well. Hey, <laughs> Raymond getting the pick on for Olga. This is pretty, pretty much what we've seen on Julie Wash with, with Olga and Duo feeling a lot. Uh, I hope they don't replicate the same mistakes too much here, but uh, now they, they knew the Uber were, were even. And, uh, and Kornax has a gun going while uh, Alien is on Paro, so the the heavy hold is happening now. I'm not quite too sure about this gun carry though, because it doesn't it doesn't cover any of the entries, does it? No, it doesn't even shoot the point. It's a well, I guess it's even over, so they might want to sack a soldier in, so they might um, just keep the gun there or put it on the little like ledge on the left hand side, right next to the sentry. That works quite well. Go actually the speeds and sneaky there. On bottom right, they might just try and run flash or just run a scout onto point now. Or, or captain, he's spamming the gun actually. On, on equal uber situation, this last is actually kind of hard to break uh, when the ubers are even and it's 6v6, but as soon as you uh, commit someone who dies, it's, all your hold is uh, becoming extremely uh, thin and, uh, and easy to uh, to break. But uh, the pyro got a reflect kill onto Sarki who tried to go for and oh okay, again! Trying to go for the sack place, but didn't really achieve anything. Barely touches Raymond. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a, a little game of chess right now because I, I'm not sure Seven really know yet how to break that hole properly because the map is still quite new and they haven't played it that much. So uh, they, I think all of the teams in Prem are still at that level where, um, hi, hey guys, how do we? Do you have any idea about how to break that hole? Then I think all of the teams are in that uh, phase still. I think the main strat is just, well, okay, Captain dies and Sneaky there for getting the sentry down. Could mean that Stark might try and sack soon, just knowing there's no sentry. Funnily enough, like, I think one of the best ways to sack on this map when there's no sentry up is just going through main. Because you've got the big cover in the middle there, the, the huge wall, to actually sack in. Like, there's, I don't think there's any way to really break the, a hold here, or like an easy way, other than just having uber advantage. Yeah, the Uber actually does everything here because uh, if you don't have it, the the entries are actually extremely close to the last point. So uh, as soon as you pick your the the gun can shoot you, or it does a sniper can can shoot you as well. So another uh, Kedus is taking his medic main. The Uber are being traded onto uh, the point onto the ground, and it, this doesn't look really good for Seven because they are uh, both weak. they lose both of their scouts. So I don't really know what was the plan here. The Kedus. Uh, took that uber main while both of his scouts pushed on top left but they both went got cleaned up by the soldier and now uh, banner has been used as well so it actually could be an opportunity uh, for the french to push raymond dives to a, a sticky snipe from raf who had the buff from the buff banner and uh, i don't if that was planned out it was actually uh, extremely well played and uh, this is a push out for the french team i don't think many people expected that but this is happening the french team are actually taking the spire now and they're gonna have an uber ride even Kermit. I didn't. I did not notice that Olga had gotten the buff banner up there. Uh, that was really nicely done. Start got like a really late pick onto Raf, but in the end, it just didn't matter at all. It's e a big, big ad for Mula here. So like, we might just see a push coming from Cave or we might. Log Room. Which one? Log Room. Okay. But again, this is extremely really tight wide, area. and there's a lot of ground to cover. Even when you yeah. have the Uber at Starkey, tries to go for the second to Mula, but dies in the process. Uh, and now the Uber is being used on Raph, who's being launched into Chalk, he's completely alone, and he can't do anything here. Raymond is out of sight, almost, no he's not, he's 20 HP, the chase from Alien almost got a frag onto Raymond, who was a bit overextended here, and the backhab on the other side of the 
Battlefield is happening from Captain who is drawing two players back so now this could be a fight for seven and it is a fight for seven they're pushing back onto choke and now they're gonna take that fight for free they have the Uber right now for last and this was extremely well played from seven they baited the aggression extremely well and Raph got a bit carried away in his double sticky jump I believe yeah the, the I'm pretty sure they would have been forced going through that the log room there anyway because it's just so small. Oh, okay, they're just seven. They're just Ubering in straight away after getting the Raph and the Sentry gun. They can just play the point here, just stick it off and probably just cap it out. If everyone just drops down, yeah, Kiss start to stand there on top of that ring and just shoot in the ground. And that's the first round there for seven. Uh, uh, all of that just off of the Uber basically on middle for the prevail like. They came through that choke like they, they needed to have like a soldier or something along with the demo in the Uber so they could close the distance a lot better than just having one scout and the demo bomb through. So I think Raymond just got out of uh, in cave room for free. Yeah, exactly. Kept his but ad for last. Wasn't that one sided? Well, the French team had their moments on that first round, so maybe Definitely. there's some stuff for them to to work on and uh, they can do something. The Flank player from Stark is already going lock room all the way back to Choke, trying to go for the flank. And the Dwarves already extremely weak. Choke is getting cleaned up. Kadis dies to Karnax, but this is uh, kind of a bad fight for seven uh, for a French team. It looked okay, but once more they just decided to sit back on their Choke. And the Stark he read that perfectly. And I don't even think it was cool that he was behind. So uh, in the end, all he had to do was walk behind or shoot a couple rockets and claim some frags. And uh, that mid looked way more convincing for, for Seven uh, because big big factor but Müller died this time. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Dwo in that mid but Olga tried to do like a really really huge bomb like across the point. Got kind of denied and then as soon as he was retreating to get health, Seven just went walked straight over the point. And it looks like... I think someone was trying to peek this entry gun in top left there. Yeah, Seven just going in gun down now they just need to keep everyone in spawn which is quite easy on this map for how small it is and everybody from the French team they're playing in the spawn onto the left side they claim a frag onto Talar so maybe actually they're all up now they got another frag onto Stocky they managed to suck up the aggression and now they're pulling back with everything they have and uh, only Cadus and Raymond are up they can't get caught up of the position of men oh, Raymond's caught they probably do Raymond dies but Cadus claims two frag onto both counts and manages to escape choke wow he was up into the air and uh, the fall damage didn't quite kill him, but uh, all in all, this is uh, another decent hold for uh, the French team. That was non-Uber versus Uber. He's jumping on Spire, one second on two. He forces the Uber onto Mula, that was really well played. He went in completely unannounced and uh, he claimed the, the force onto Mula, so that was a nice salvage play here from Cadiz. And the whole Uber just stayed behind looking at Cadiz there, so they couldn't even get forward to try and threaten Raymond at all. Seven can just sit back and build up their advantage maybe. All it's not really an advantage, through, the Ubers are even and uh, the aggression from the French team is happening onto mid, they claim two frags, it's 4v3 now but the hills is quite... No, no uh, Mule actually equalized the, the hill uh, numbers by uh, with a nice arrow so now it's actually going to be a nice position for the uh, French team, they managed to take that uh, just with the sheer aggression. Yeah, I thought that um, Seven would have had an advantage of that just from the force from... Cadis onto Mula, but I guess Seven just weren't building all that well. Or either that or Raymond spawned very late, but but here we are on even Ubers. Duo hiding in a log room. So that's going to be an interesting situation for the French team because they're losing, but they still have 21 minutes before it, it's over. Yeah. They don't need to rush anything. So will they get carried away and try to go for a sport force play? Maybe commit too many people in that fight? We'll see how it happens, but... Um, Again, this is a really hard uh, push to pawn because there's no real flanks uh, if you sit on Spire and Duo dies on the flank. But there's no real like you can't really flank the medic if uh, the medic is sitting on Spire or nearby. So it's going to be hard to do a flank play. And uh, Duo tried, but he got picked up onto the lock room. And now it's up to seven to try to do something. Raph is completely alone. Choke is getting uh, uh, supported Captain by his dying in lock room, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is that enough, though, Kermit? Do you think they can do anything here? They could counter sack, but Cadis does have stickies all over Choke, so if they try and go for a high bomb there, it's going to get shut down. Olga's just walking up really close on the right hand side though. He doesn't have any heals with him, uh, so he has to fall back, and uh, the, the little what space the he took uh, is already recovered now by, by 7 Cadis. Uh, he, he's learning every minute and he already has a new sticky trap here to try to pick up Olga if uh, the Frenchman decides to pick again 
onto the log room and uh, I'm surprised not to see any up flashes from the French team because uh, I, I don't think they can do anything in that position right now. Uh, at least they don't look like they want to try anything risky. Yeah, um, Bo is getting picked off in cave room by Sill there. Stark just kind of trying to back him up. They could have an off pass now or Seven might um, try and do something themselves. Captain getting kind of aggro at choke. Is taking a buff. He might try and bomb through. Yeah, he's going in. No, he actually oh, just no. he's faking was just it out. a decoy. Trying to once one round. But Stark, he, he tried. <laughs> but I think he beefed his jump a bit onto the wall and uh, he had to go back. But he had the the proper mindset to uh, not feed and uh, go back, maybe try again. Uh, but this time his jump maybe has been read by Raph and uh, it doesn't look like he wants to do it quite yet and uh, maybe just want to try to do something else. But yeah, this is quite stalemate here because no teams want to actually take too big of a risk to force the enemy. So, uh, um, I mean, both teams have a lot of time, so there's no rush yet for for the Frenchman and I think Seven is quite happy to just sit there because they know they're a better team and uh, if they play this out properly, they, they don't risk that much. What I was actually surprised about is I thought that Olga had maybe been stalemating deliberately to try and build up another buff banner. Oh, we do have a sack coming in here. Olga gets in some damage on Cadus, but not enough to actually get the frag. Interesting decision here from Olga. Cell he did try in. to go for the Oh, Cell just in. walked in from Logger. He forces Mula. Uh, kind of a uh, questionable pop here from yeah. Mula because he was more than uh, one meter one away from two, dropping. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm not sure this is quite a good decision, but in the end, it happened. And uh, now Seven are trying to make their way through the middle, but they have a lot of ground to cover before using their Uber effectively. Alien trying to go onto the flank, but it's getting cleaned up by Kedis and Talash. And uh, now it's probably a good time for uh, the Crevet to go back to their second point and try to equalize the situation. Rimmon has been oh, wow. forced though, I think Duo was behind and he got the nice rocket onto the Medic and it forces the situation, forces the Uber and the bomb coming from Captain and Kedis. Try to see if they can pick any uh, unaware Frenchman, but it doesn't look like they can do so. And uh, but the three people be alien died in the end eventually. And uh, uh, even though that that pop wasn't uh, uh, what uh, Seven desired, in the end they managed to uh, secure a good position onto the second point. Yeah, Karnax had almost at least gotten like a return frag on to Stark, but Stark lived on one HP in cave room, unbelievably close to at least have some sort of pick. All the off classes though, because the French know they have the uber advantage. I want to push out this lower right door. Oh, they need to be careful because this lobby is huge and it's not that hard to try to, to go for a flank play. And uh, the lot of space is uh, taken by a raft, but Duo dies and Karnak does as well. This is looking pretty Sills bad on now. Last. And uh, getting chased yeah, by Olga. On last. Is he gonna win that duel? No, he's not. He was close enough. They got a lot of damage as well onto Olga. And Alien Lula comes used. in, gets a pick on to start on second. But we like used Kermit, and so now this is looking really yeah. dire for, for Frenchmen. The Uber is being used onto Cadiz from 7, onto main. Talash just playing the point with the help of the Uber and Captain. All they have to do now is to claim their frags and then play the cap. They're getting two with Olga and Rap. Cadiz dies. Talash is 1 HP. Can the Frenchmen actually hold that once more? But it looks really, really bad for them. They're only three up against four players. Alien gets a frag onto Captain. Maybe this is happening. Maybe it is another hold. For the Frenchman, they actually do it once more. I don't know how they do that, but this they is the second time two they're seconds as well. Olga and Raph spawn now. Well, Stark's coming in though, Stark's trying to get the pick on Tamula. One nice rocket, but not enough. 10 15 advantage here for the Frenchman. Seven building hard on top of point though. This is going to be a really risky push oh, out, they, even though they they're are. They're going the for it though. Yeah, it's risky. Like said it, but they're taking it. it. They got a frag. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I've made that decision, but it looked like it's working out uh, yeah. pretty good for the Frenchmen. They uh, have a, they are asserting positioning onto the second point. Uber is being used onto Cadiz. This is a trade. It looks like it's going to be a decent one for seven. But as I said, that they have awful position. Alien almost got Raymond. Took him down to 10 HP, and the, they actually got it. But kept Dark it. behind. Cadiz uh, behind getting pipes on. He gets the pipe on to Villa. Oh, Cadis was just behind in lobby there and just spamming pipes at the point, hit one onto, I think it was Mula and Olga, and then just gets the follow-up pipe onto Mula. Secures that uber advantage, for the moment at least, for Seven.
Raf could bomb in or do something from choke here. Yeah, he tried to sync with Carnax, but he didn't quite manage to uh, have that good window to jump in. And now he's getting jumped back by Raf. They have to go back. But yeah, uh, the Frenchman, you mentioned how Kedos was behind. They just lost track of him after the Uber. I think he jumped behind yeah. uh, unnoticed. And uh, he managed to once more uh, got the frag onto Mula. So that was really well played here from the from the 7 demo mine. And the uh, 7 is trying to bully their way into that lock room. They pushed Olga back to the roof of the sheds with a mid HP, and they probably are gonna take that just out of the M. Uh, Raph, though, claims a frag onto Selectus with a sticky trap. Is that enough to slow down the push from 7? It looks like it is a bit, and now uh, Frenchmen are gonna focus on getting that Uber. We've seen them holding a quite uh, uh, bad Uber situation on last, so maybe they're gonna do that again. It's, 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 easy, it's gonna be easier to do with the, with the Uber in their hands. Yeah, and they do have a pyro in the top their top left just to kind of deny anyone that wants to try and bomb in. I'm surprised that it is Alien. I, I thought Olga would, again, he just doesn't like Pyro at all now that even his unlocks are gone. There's Pyro gun energy as well. is like, yeah, this is going to be a really solid hold again. This is the same gun, Kermit, that we've talked before where it doesn't cover that much except the little, uh, it has a really small angle onto the shutter door, but otherwise it doesn't really cover anything and it's yeah, already and dead. <laughs> yeah. It could maybe see a little bit into Sneaky where Stark is right now and he might try and make a play. No, been spotted. And he might go down here actually, he takes a lot of damage. Ooh, Dwarf the falls extremely weak onto the point. point. <gasps> Slintus just pressed W, he almost got uh, something happening, but uh, the bomb from Captain, Captain this down. time uh, Karnex switched his uh, sentry gun positioning and it uh, probably surprised Captain a bit. And now they're two down, uh, Silentus and Captain both in spawn, so maybe it's uh, an opportunity for the freshman to try to sack, but this time it looks like uh, Olga care about his life a little more than usual, and he's not going for uh, the uh, uh, sack play this time. Uh, it's gonna be another hold, and Duo is on Spy, so is that just for checking, or is that actually for a proactive play? It looks like, yeah, it's uh, just, just for checking, and uh, pretty wise here, but uh, earlier it was 21 minutes left, now it's only 13 so the clock is starting to tick for the Frenchman and uh, get spammed down from main exactly Kermit and no gun they're going Uber to Uber use. Olga goes really weak at the start of the Uber but now the rest of the Uber is going to be on him he can just chase Kadis out and get the pick actually and Olga's on a buff banner right now so that's going to be a ton of damage towards his banner Alien getting quite low as well but I think he's okay I wish I only wish I could see how. Oh, there we go. Olga does have his banner. I was about to say, how wonder how close he is. They might, he's holding it. As soon it's as they see someone here. close, they might just pop it. They might oh, pop it here. Yeah. The, the banner is being released by uh, Olga and uh, Seven. They've been caught out of position once. They don't want it to happen twice, so they're already back on middle. And uh, we've mentioned Kermit before how this uh, last hole can be extremely hold, hard to break when the Ubers are even. And, uh, Looks like Seven, they don't really know how to approach that situation, uh, even though they manage to uh, they get decent spikes on every other areas of the of the map. But that last is uh, is, is bothering them. They don't really know how to, to break that hole for the Frenchman. Yeah, I really like... Uh, it seems like the like Olga's at least found his favourite way of actually pushing out from last, and it's just get the buff banner. They, they got so much damage with only just a few rockets onto uh, Seven. They're just all clumped up and choked. Olga actually almost getting the frag onto Stark and flank there, getting him down to 15 HP. Olga is still on buff banner. Again, I don't know how close he is, but if he just gets tanked and maybe tries to pick someone on flank, he could maybe build a full charge again, because it is even over. Stark Ooh, does go again. Bob Rocky, Olga goes yep. to get the frag onto Stark. Is that enough though to push out from? I'm not quite sure because uh, Olga, I think, is... Uh, uh, I can, I can only guess, but I think he's uh, halfway through his banner because he, he just used this one, his own banner yeah. before, so uh, I, I'm not sure he has it quite yet. And uh, it looks like uh, the Frenchmen, they want to play around that banner because they know the Ubers are even, so they are trying to build this Karnax is a tiny little really advantage. Far in. Karnax had like, run the whole way up through a cave there, I wondered if he was going to try and get in. I'm surprised that Seven haven't off passed at all yet, like start going down here could have gone sniper or something to try and break the stalemate, but... I guess both team like both teams don't want to give up any ground they have because I think that just they could just use momentum to end up losing more than just the one point. So I feel if uh, ever oh okay this goes down he went in for a sack okay yeah he tried and oh there's, yeah, here comes the banner. banner so that is his uh, 
what he's we've all expected this. for a while now. The push out from the Frenchman, they try to go with the banner. He's being released, the Uber is being used, it's being traded. Uh, Olga's still holding his banner, so they're going to keep it for the after fight. But they have the little uh, high grade disadvantage, so is that going to be enough? The bomb from Olga is trying to get one rocket. Gets Talash as well, uh, Delicious died uh, on the flank, and now it's Starkey uh, to be the next casualty. It actually worked out, Kermit, that that little trade followed by the... By the Banner was uh, really well played. That was so smart from Olga, just to, like making sure that he didn't take the Uber. He just ran back as soon as it happened, let the scout take the Uber, and then he just held his banner the entire time so that Seven would stay close, thinking there'd be, you know, hoping maybe that Olga used the banner during the Uber, but it was the full duration banner as soon as the Uber was over and just absolutely destroyed Seven. Kadus just walking in, gets Alien, and pays for it with his life. Probably not worth it though to trade a scout for a demo, especially when you have a quite uber disadvantage. But look at the health onto the freshman, Damage. they're all in the red health, so it's gonna be pretty bad for them to hold now. And they're getting spammed out as well. They're trying to leave from the midpoint. Rat, it's really weak, he has to get the uber used by Mula onto him. And uh, it's, uh, it was pretty much what Seven wanted. Uh, Force the uber, try to fall back without putting Raymond in the dire situation, and this is what happened. So now uh, they probably. Uh, yeah, they hope that uh, that trap from Raph would do anything, but it didn't. And now Raymond has his own Uber, and uh, the Frenchmen have no other choice but to fall back onto their choke. They still don't have and no off classes either. All good, just spamming with from choke just to try and get as much buff banner as they can. But Seven are just going to come straight in with the Uber. Kate is bombing in. Gets Raph on the bottom right. Go going down as well. This is looking no, bad just now. just out on last on his own with Olga. Every, Olga every French HP. player almost was cut out of position, Kermit. And uh, they didn't really see that coming, to say the least. And now it's going to be a pawn play from Kedus. Surrounding himself from Stickies. Gets a frag onto Olga. And uh, uh, I don't know if that was a misread of the situation from the freshman. They, but they were way too close, uh, given the circumstances. Yeah, and then just... I don't know if Mula maybe could have just let Raph die and then have at le least have his Uber to try and hold second or at least have it for last instead of having the Uber that they did, did have on middle it was literally only to save Raph's life and it wasn't very good. You see the third Next, minute now it's 2 0 for 7 there's still time for the Frenchman to make a comeback Raph is actually winning that fight against Cadence onto mid but his team is not quite here yet to help him uh, gain that position and uh, look at them Raph was the only one far forward the bomb from Duo trying to go onto Raymond, but doesn't really quite work here. And uh, this should be another fight going into the favor of Seven. Karnax and Mula putting behind. extremely weak the flank from Celentis, claiming two frags, uh, dying in the process. But uh, it looks like some miscommunication here came in between Raph and the rest of his team because Raph was extremely forward and um, everyone else was just sitting back in choke as they he did got before. got so much damage onto Kadis as well. I swear Kadis was only like 20 or 30 HP or something before he got arrowed. I'm not gonna lie though, in half that mid I just, I think uh, Stark got like skyboxed and I was just waiting to see if Olga or uh, Raph or Duo would hit the airshot on him. Sadly no one did and he ended, Stark just ended up getting loads of damage. And this is another uber, uh, full uber rat for, for 7, they're trying to go maybe uh, up top positions? right. There's a gun, we've seen that before on the top right, little slope, but it's getting cleaned up quite soon by Captain AK yeah. this. Now it's going to be another point from Talash from moving the sticky. He's, he's getting supported by Silentes. Silentes was on the point. He just looked Olga into the eye, but Olga didn't let him cap. I, I guess he just come on, be my guest. Uh, I was wondering if that sentry would do better, but I think with the sentry being on the far side, uh, on the left hand side, it just takes seven longer to get there, so the sentry lasts a bit longer. I know that they, they did hold against like Uber versus non Uber before. I was hoping that might happen again, but seven just got the frags, especially Thalash was really low on the point after Dent and Sticks, then still ran on with a buff so they could just get as much cap time as possible. This time this is Kadus winning the demo duel. Oh, he getting double airshot by Stark. Oh, did he? That's pretty Stark rough. Go down. Pretty oh, rough wow. for yeah. them. And look Definitely at that aggression from Seven. They're all in the enemy choke trying to bust in. Only Kadus capping with the help of the paint train, leaving the task of cleaning up for, uh, for his scouts. And they do that. Pretty well, pretty well. They they getting another fragment to early, and then that mid was extremely dominant. Probably the most dominant mid from seven. They just didn't respect the Frenchman at all. They just pressed double with the whole way. Yeah, and Stark there. I think spy checking a little bit to see if there were any off classes. No, were none at the time, so he doesn't know. But yeah, I'm pretty sure like 
Olga tried to do a bomb on the left hand side. Oh, they're, they're just in seven, they're in already. But still on the point, getting some cap time. And yep, they just walk on the point while everyone's on the high ground. Pretty pretty quick round here. I think this is the quickest round. The quickest. <laughs> On lockdown and uh, maybe seven, yeah. they found a secret recipe to to win efficiently now. But five minutes for five rounds, Kermit? Do you think? I, I don't know what's the fastest possible round to to be uh, like fastest way to win a round on lockdown. But I doubt this is enough time for them to win yeah. the map. Very doubtful. It, uh, it's definitely GG. But I guess we can at least you know fight it out and just see how many if any rounds can be taken from seven. Raph all the way on point, somehow alive on six HP. Cadus on 3 HP does get picked off by Karnax. Looks like a somewhat Olga even fight though down. for this fifth mid, but again, it happens the really deep. Big job, <laughs> big work here from the Ashtal Action Oh, Raymond goes down! Alien and Karnax just getting the double meat shot on him. They actually do get the pick onto Raymond, and Mula lives with 60% Uber. I think that. That was almost <laughs> really bad, but. um. Just Karnak's nailing, clutching it out, getting that med pick. They might be able to hold for at least a little bit here. Sill on forward on point. Doesn't that he just hits S and runs away? Stark is on spy as well, so they know it's GG. So they they yeah, they allow themselves to go for a little uh, cheeky plays on the off class. Starkey making his way onto cave. It's gonna be a <laughs> pretty long way to go though. I'm not sure this is quite the best decision. And Mula, uh, he's uh, he has the Uber, even oh, though both Stark. winnings died at the same time. But oh. Stark, oh, he was one stab. He gets the double stab. He gets Mula and Alien. We said it's garbage time, but still go for those plays. That's Stark's highlight for this map. Wrath getting picked off by Thalash. Uh, should be around now for seven. Uh, they haven't used their own way, but that drop from Starkey was the cherry on the cake for yeah. the Frenchman. Nothing went their way uh, almost on this on this map, and uh, now Kedis is right. He's looking to lead that crit creek onto the top right. It's being used. He claims the sniper. It's actually a really good pick because now they can just make their way onto last for free. Duo bombing back, but he can't do anything. Dalash getting cleaned up by nice by from Rav, but is that enough? For the Frenchman to hold that, uh, Karnax gets another frag, but now it's going to be a point play from Cadis and Slentis, and it looks like all stack he has to do is spawn camp and play high ground, and he does that to perfection. And this is a 5-0 uh, on that second map. He actually uh, almost went to distance, almost uh, 30 yeah. minutes, but in the end, uh, 7 were uh, once more the better team, but it, it showed a bit less on that second map. Yeah, they, they, they certainly didn't know exactly what they wanted to do, like, especially for Breaking the like full holds on last, they they just couldn't seem to do it. Especially one on one round where they tried to push with full Uber against no Uber and still failed the push. Yeah, it still definitely some, goes uh, to show they're not quite comfortable enough with the map yet. Still some work to do for them for for next week, but because Logjam, this is the first week with Logjam, we'll see that uh, on the next week. So still some improvement to be to be made for seven. But in the end, this is what they were they came for. Six points, they got it, and uh, we're gonna take a quick look at the logs to see who uh, popped up the most. Kermit, uh, who do, the last twenty-one and seven there. Karnak's actually getting quite a lot. He he joint top fragged with Kadis on twenty-two frags. Surprised to see that. Kadis once more. He had a really good first map already, and uh, yeah. It's another good map and uh, surprising. I mean, this map was really stalemate so maybe not that surprising, but nobody's breaking the 300 DPM mark. So uh, Stark and Kade is both pretty close, though, 290 and 280 DPM. Close, but not good enough, Kermit. Yeah. In the Even end. with the crits, Kade couldn't quite get there. Yeah, I don't know how much. I think he got like maybe two frags with his uh, crits. He definitely got Alien and Sniper, and then I think he got Duo, and he tried to jump back into spawn. Maybe that was the attempt, trying to uh, yeah. boost these logs, but uh, I think now we can... Uh, uh, do you have any uh, any other thing to share about these logs, Kermit? I think... Oh, well, again, we only had one drop in this map this time. It was uh, Mula that dropped. I think that was literally just that one backstab start got at the very, very end of the game. Both meds seemingly playing pretty well, or at least having the meds around them. Raymond only had three deaths, actually. You three deads throughout the entire map. 
it's pretty good from him. Okay. I guess that's just like kind of showing like Thalash also only died seven times and got 21 frags. He's probably just keeping Raymond incredibly safe. Actually, one thing I want to I wanna highlight here is um, the heal rate from Raymond. And we can see that both Captain and Saki have less than 20%. And uh, this is probably how K uh, Seven wants to play the map in a, in a way where uh, Kadus takes a lot of the heals more than usual. And, and Captain plays at that, as that second roamer soldier, yeah. probably. And uh, it's... Maybe the fact that this map is extremely wide is not a, a stranger to that. Yeah, just kind of putting the gunboats to good use, basically. Because, like, you would see, like, on most of the mids, Captain was just bombing. Uh, on both maps, actually, Captain was just bombing in just as much as uh, Stark was. I think last, last pushes as well, like, if they wanted to try and sack in, uh, Captain was right along there with Stark, just trying to sack in or at least try and get stuff done like i think a lot of times it was captain that seemed to die when he tried to ever take out a sentry gun it was usually captain doing it on his own and he just died usually for it uh but this is all just uh, he's not heal heavy well i had to say about log skirmish so i say we go through the interview uh process we have uh, we're joined by olga who were just hey. lost unfortunately for him hi olga how are you how are you doing after that pretty rough evening well, uh, I think it was ex expected. <laughs> like, we had no surprise. We are the lowest ranked team in Prem, and well, they are the best. But we managed to do, I think, quite well on the log jump. Yeah, that, that was a. Uh, we're just going to pass on Gully Wash, was uh, pr pretty much what we yeah. expected <laughs> a, a quick uh, uh, run in the park for seven. But on log jump, you actually guys put, put up quite a fight, and. Uh, uh, what surprises uh, Kermit and, and myself was that the way you hold, you actually managed to hold your last in a quite a number of occasions. Did you, uh, did you maybe find a secret way to hold the logjam last? Uh, well, I don't know. For me, it was the first time I was playing logjam because I wasn't here yesterday to scream. But uh, I think the the real factors that were playing in this game were that uh, Raf decided to play really slow. Like in uh, comparison to Gully Wash. And we tried like banners and shit. I think it worked uh, like pretty well on the first round and the second round. But in the end, yeah, so they won. <laughs> and uh, the, the other interesting thing was the f how much you run the buff banner, uh, which I don't recall seeing you doing that much on the other maps. Is that uh, again something you had in mind for a log jam, or is this maybe not you don't have that much to lose? Uh, in that season, so you're just gonna try things out. Well, uh, I think on log jam, like I had a, when we were defending last, I do have like a really large window to spam on the on the left, and uh, I personally really like the buff banner because it's well the most powerful banner that you can get. So yeah, I think yeah, most it, of your last pushes seem to only work because of you in the buff banner. It was really good, super strong. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, when you can deal like <laughs> like fat uh, 130 30 rockets from uh, really far away, yeah, it's pretty effective. Yeah, we even saw Raph uh, with a sticky snipe with the buff banner getting Raymond, so that was pretty uh, nice to say. To, to see, um, one more thing before we, we move on on, on that logjam is uh, on middle, I think most people don't really know how to play the mid yet, and we've seen you guys trying to go sit really deep into your choke, maybe... I think the plan was to bait the jump from from Captain and and Starkey. Uh, would you say it would work against uh, lesser players, or it, maybe it's just something to scrap back and try something else? Uh, well, I I truly think that uh, Seven does not know yet how to play the mid on long jump, and uh, we saw that uh, Tiger and uh, well uh, Captain and uh, Starkey were really aggro on us, but. First, we, we tried to play a bit aggressive, but it really didn't manage to do that properly. So yeah, we just waited for them to, to bomb us. And, uh, but I think we didn't want a, a single mid, did we? Uh, no, you did not, unfortunately. Uh, but, so that was it uh, for 7, and uh, I'm looking at the rest of your games, and uh, it's, looking, it's looking pretty rough. Until the end of the season, because uh, you have this is going to be a, a French Derby next season, next week. Uh, yeah. But then it's going to be a Saint and Swift. Uh, do you expect anything out of the rest of the season, or what? What is the what is the mindset now for you guys? Uh, well, honestly, 
we just want to to get points against the other French team because the only time we screamed us, I think not the only time, but uh, back in the days we were screaming at them. And uh, once we got uh, a tie on the for five CP and a and a sweet uh, three one on the product, so <laughs> so yeah, we we are feeling confident. There's still room for hope, I see. And then it's gonna be a a sentence with yeah, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> Well, at least you're playing it through. Uh, some people decide to, you know, uh, fall, fall or drop from the season. So at least you guys are, are going to make it through the end. Um, Kermit, do you have any any question to add? Uh, no, thank you. Covered everything there. So let's uh, go through the shout outs. Olga, do you have anyone you want to shout out tonight? Mm, well, shout out to, to my team. Shout out to you guys for casting. And shout out to the people that were watching. There was a quite a, of a French crew in chat tonight, uh, probably because of uh, one of the team that was playing. I don't know which one. Uh, Kermit, do you have any shout-outs yourself? Uh, I'll give a shout to Steven, TF2. That's a safe lad to him. I and will myself... any from you. Oh, my bad. I cut you through. I was just going to ask you whatever shout-outs you had. <laughs> uh, I will shout-out Peter uh, on production, who's mute tonight, but still with us and doing that uh, good camera work so thank you Peter thank you Kermit for casting on the, a, a little short notice uh, shout out to people who watched shout out to people who are involved in TF2 and shout out to everyone who's going to come to Copenhagen uh, after the, the season ends and uh, I believe there's another the next game is going to be on Sunday so make sure you, you tune in to see that and we will see you there so uh, have a good evening everyone <laughs>